First of all, is there anything in my teeth? Because I just ate lunch. You're not going to be able to tell me, are you? All right. Well, anyway. Uh, I'm making this, this new video because uh, I'm beginning, like, besieged. My, my email inbox has been getting besieged with um, emails from, I don't want to call them scammers because a lot of them aren't, but, um, but from other writers, especially independent writers, some hybrid like me, um, and some traditional who are like, tired of not making any money from your books? Well, pay $600 for my course and I'll show you the secret to making a million dollars from your books. But you gotta put up the cash first. Um, I'm always a little skeptical with this stuff, um, more than skeptical. I mean, sometimes I actually like look at the emails and stuff because who doesn't want to make a million bucks, right? Bernie Sanders doesn't want to make a million bucks, I guess. I don't know. He's an idiot. Anyway, uh, back on track here. But so I thought I would make a video in which I tell you exactly what you need to have in order to make it in this business, this crazy, brutal business. It's not even a business, really. It's more like a lottery. Um, all right, so, okay, number one. I got a cheat sheet here, so if, I, if, if it looks like I'm, all right. You need guts. Um, you're gonna be giving up a lot if you're gonna become a full-time writer, especially a fiction writer. Um, I was actually groomed for a construction business, like a commercial construction business. That was, uh, that was what my dad did and what his dad did. Um, and it was always assumed, no, it wasn't just assumed, it was like mandated from my family that that's what I was going to do when I graduated college, like you're, you're, or even if I didn't go to college, it didn't matter. You're going to work in the business. That's what I heard from the, from day one. Um, I was going to be this, I got a phone call here, I got to ignore it. There, there it goes. I was going to be this, you know, major league construction guy, and and uh, you know, have the, the the country club and the house and the suburbs and and uh, you know, all that stuff. Um, sounds great to some people. That sounds like wow, wow, that's awesome. And I did. I went to work for my dad. Right. I I think he gave me like a week off after college. All my friends went to Europe. I had to go to Cohoes, New York. Um, and show up to work. And from day one, I hated it. I hated it like so much. It was so boring. It was unbelievable. But anyway, um, but the thing is, that business would have provided me with tremendous security. It would have, you know, I would not have had to worry about um, finances. Um, it just would have been like, you know, like wow. Like a lot of people were like, wow, Vince is so lucky. He gets this huge business, right? And the rest of us have to like, you know, try to get jobs or try to start our own businesses and, you know, work it from the ground up. But Vince has already got this business that's worth millions of dollars. Like, he's so lucky. Um, well, I wasn't so lucky because I hated it. Um, and I wanted to do something else. And so I gave it all up at a very young age, um, even with a wife and two tiny little kids, um, knowing in my gut that I was making the right move. Don't ask, maybe, maybe I confused guts for like just sheer stupidity, but um, at the time, but I, it was just, it was, it was like, I just knew it. I was like, I, I, I knew that this was the life for me and that there was gonna be, there was, there was no other choice but to uh, choose the writing life. So I gave it all up and I went for it. Um, which leads me to the second thing. You're gonna need time. And by that I mean, uh, you're gonna be writing a lot, especially in the beginning. You're gonna be putting in, I think, what's that like famous thing? You're gonna be putting in your 10,000 hours or whatever that crap is. Um, but it's not crap actually, because 
Um, you're going to be, you got to write the crappy stuff before you can write the good stuff. And you're going to be writing and writing and writing until your hand falls off, until your fingertips fall off. Um, it just, it takes a while. Some people um, are more talented than others. So, you know, maybe they can get to the good stuff, you know, mine their way to the good stuff earlier. Um, I can remember in my case, I would get up at like four in the morning and I would write until I went to a day job and then I'd come home and write some more and then I'd write all weekends. It was just, it was crazy. Um, but eventually, the, the more time I put into it, the better I got. I mean, this, the writing muscle is definitely a use it or lose it instrument. Um, you really have to keep it in shape um, and it takes a lot of time which segues into this thing that, that I'm about to tell you. I call it a thing because it scares me when I see it on my cheat sheet. Relationships. Chances are, if you're going to be a really good writer, your relationships are going to be fucked up. Right? I'm going to say it again. Your relationships are going to be super fucked up. And I'll tell you why. Because this is a selfish business and you're gonna be using every spare moment to be writing. And when you're not writing, even if you're like out to dinner or you know, you're out for drinks or you know, you're on vacation or whatever the hell it is, um, you're always gonna be thinking about your story or the next stories you wanna write or something to do with it or you know, that submission you just sent out to some stupid journal. You're just always going to be, you're going to be somewhere else all the time. And not everybody can deal with that. Um, you know, I, I got divorced twice um, and I ain't never getting married again. Because uh, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put anybody, any, a, a, a nice woman through that crap again. Although I am back with my second wife, but I'll save that for another blog. But we're not married. Um, and it takes, it takes a lot of work for a relationship to work normally, but then to make it work with a writer, holy crap. Um, so uh, um, my second wife had to have like this heart of gold to take me back, but um, I don't know. I, sometimes I think she wants to hire a hitman to take me out sometimes, but um, anyway. Uh, all right, so where are we? Number one, two, three, four, number four. You got to have a thick skin because people are not only going to doubt you, especially like these people who you thought you were your friends, like like maybe your high school, old high school friends. They're just like, oh, yeah, there's been he's like going to be a construction guy. Wait, wait, he's a writer. What? What? Where did that come from? Like what? Um, so, you know, and then they're going to like. If they read something, maybe they'll say something to you, or you know, maybe they'll just kind of be like, "I haven't read any of your books yet, nor am I gonna." Um, and then there are going to be the people who are going to read them, and they're going to like critique them to your face, and you're going to be like, "Oh my God, go 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 away!" Um, and you know, and of course, there's going to be millions upon millions of rejections, and there's going to be even. A old writing school teacher of mine once said, "This is the, this is a business of like three steps forward, two steps back. Three steps forward, two steps back. Eventually, you get where you're going, but man, you know, <laughs> it could take forever." Um, listen, I know there's there's always always that person every year who just seems to come out of nowhere and it looks like a one hit wonder kind of thing. But chances are they've been working their tail off for for ages as well. But you're going to put up with a lot of rejection in this business. Not only rejection in the form of stories that are just going to not be right for a certain publication, uh, but you're going to put up with relationship rejection, uh, be it from your significant other or from your mom or your kids, you know. Um, it, it's, it, you have to develop a skin that's so thick you're just impervious to it all and you can just plow through it and you just get up in the morning no matter what and put in your word count. So you have to have that, uh, you know, you have to be like a tank. You have to be strong like bull if you're gonna do this. Which segues into perseverance. Um, you 
one thing, you know, I was lucky. When, when I got, I went to writing school, I got out of writing school at like 31 or something like that. It was 20 years ago. Um, how old am I now? It doesn't matter. Um, I, I was so lucky. I, I nailed a quarter of a million dollar writing contract for two books, like within a year out of writing school. It was like amazing. And I thought, oh my God, like I've made it. Like that's it. That's it. I don't have to work hard anymore. I could just, you know, uh, wallow in my success and, you know, go for long lunches and crap like that. Uh, but no, what I didn't realize then was like this, this business is super cyclical. Um, it's, it's great times followed by like absolute horrible times. And then maybe you'll, if you persevere, you'll climb back up again. And then da, 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 da. You, you get what I'm talking about. Um, what you got to realize is that the really good times are not really good. And the really bad times are not really bad. Um, pretty much everything finds a happy medium. Um, but you have to recognize, you, you, the longer you stay in the business, the, longer, the, longer, the more you come to recognize um, that, you know, that you, you're always looking for that happy medium. Um, you're looking for steady sales. Um, you don't need successes all the time, but you know, um, but it's nice to get them now and then. But um, you have to be able to, with you know, you have to be able to weather the storms. I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, so, the most important thing is you have to persevere, no matter what. You have to set yourself up so that you know. Um, you can withstand the attacks, um, and that, and and that also you're grounded enough so that when you do get those huge successes, it doesn't all go to your head. All right. Now for the last item. What's the one thing, the number one thing you need to make it as a full-time fiction writer? You need talent. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You got to have the talent. Um, not that, you know, listen, especially on the independent side of things in this business these days, there's a lot of crap out there. And that's the one problem I have with the independent side is that anybody can write a book and put it out there. And so, therefore, like, uh, there's just an awful lot of shit out there, folks. Um, so it's up to you, the reader, to discern and to filter out what's good, what's bad. Um, but you got to have talent. And on top of the talent, you got to kind of recognize if you don't have talent, you can't, you know, you can't polish crap, you know? Um, so sadly, some of you are gonna have to look at yourself in the mirror and be honest. And you have to say, do I have what it takes? Do I have that talent? Um, you know, if you've been getting nothing but like one star reviews and you've been getting nothing but rejections for 30 years and you've been getting, you know, like, and you're still like, I'm gonna make it, this next one, this, the next one's gonna do it. Uh, in a way, I want to applaud you, but on the other hand, give it up. Um, that's not to discourage anybody. You know, just be super honest with yourself. Because on the other hand, if you have been having reasonable success and you have seen your work um, improve markedly with practice and with all that time you've been putting in, uh, then don't quit. Keep it going because you would vent it, 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 as much as you you know. The more you jab, the better chance you have of slipping one in and connecting. All right. So those are my six or eight or five or six. Uh, the things you need to make it in this business and see you didn't have to spend 600 bucks in order to find out. Um, it's really not about gaming the system or taking out Facebook ads or whatever. I mean, I do all those things, but that's not really what's going to help me continue to have success. What's going to help me continue to have success is putting in the time, persevering, and, and honing my talent. Um, and just putting in that word count every single day. Um, one, you know, write the book, publish it, rinse, repeat. All right. If you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like it, go to www.vincentzandry.com and, and I even have a Patreon page, but I don't know. Nobody's, nobody's giving me anything there yet. 
They must be like, he doesn't need the money. Anyway, whatever. Um, all right, thanks. And I'm out.